In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to construct uh, the double piped pocket on the back of a pair of men's trousers. I'm going to use the techniques from the classic tailoring techniques book by Roberto Cabrera and Patricia Myers. What's nice about this method of construction is the nicely clean finished look it gives you on the inside of the pocket. Now I've adapted it. This is, has a clean finished um, French seam on it and I have adapted this to be more theatrical tailoring. So there are some ways that I differ from the Cabrera method, but essentially it's the same. For this method, the garment pieces we're going to be working with are the trouser back, the piece of fabric that creates this double piped pocketing, or some people call them the lips of the pocket. On the inside, of course, you have the pocket bag. You have one bag here, uh, another piece of pocketing for the other side of the bag, so together they create the bag. And then, when the pocket is open, we don't want to see the pocketing, so there's another piece of wool here that we call the pocket facing, so that when the pocket goes around the uh, curve of the hip and sits open a little bit, we have just nice, um, continuous fashion fabric. Here are the pattern pieces you would be using. This is the pocketing, the poly cotton or cotton pocketing. You would cut two of these for each pocket. So if you have pockets on both sides, you'd be cutting four. And then you would want to cut uh, two pieces of wool for each pocket two inches by eight inches, and then two and a half by eight inches. Uh, the book says to cut them a little bit narrower. I find the beginning tailors, people who are still getting their tailor's fingers, um, uh, have more success with a little bit wider fabric. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to be showing you the step-by-step -step teaching samples that I use in my class. So imagine, if you will, that this is the back of the trousers. This is the outside of the trouser back and the inside I've uh, chalk marked the pocket placement line and then I thread marked that so that uh, throughout this process I cannot lose that placement line. In your patterning you're going to want to have just a little bit of a curve on that pocket. If it was absolutely straight it would gape open more as it goes around the uh, curve of the hip. So let's just build in a little bit of a curve on that pocket bag and that pocket placement line. I've cut two pieces of pocketing. Uh, this bag was for a pair of pants that had a much higher waist. So for these pocket samples, I have a shorter pocket bag, so don't get confused about that. Two pieces of pocketing, in this case I just used muslin for this teaching sample, and then the one facing piece, one piece of wool, gets surged on one edge, and then uh, I zigzag it flat, placing it over that pocket placement line. This is the one, this is the pocket piece that is going to go on the inside, so that we don't see any of that pocketing showing through the, the opening of the, the pocket. The other piece gets surged on one edge, and this is the piece that we're going to use as the welts or pocket lips or the pocket piping. You'll hear people call them each of those three designations. Once you have all your pieces cut, surged, and this zigzagged on, we can set that piece aside because we're going to be working with these three. So this is the inside of the trouser because it's chalk marked. We don't mark on the outside of the trouser, but we have thread marked through so that we don't lose that spot. Match up the pocket placement line on your pocketing piece with the pocket placement line on the trouser back. Match those up, pin that in place. We're going to be stitching through all these layers, so I just put four pins in to keep that secure. Then, 
from the right side, let's work with the pocket piping or the pocket welch or the pocket lips, whatever you want to call that. And we're going to place this centered on the pocket placement line. And we're going to do that with center it. If you have stripes or plaids, this is the time to match those up. And the surging is toward the hem of the garment. We want to pin this in place. To get that ready, I pin my uh, put place my pins at the outer edge of this because we're going to turn that over and we're going to stitch um, around the outside of this uh, placement line, and I don't want those pins to get caught in the feed dogs of the sewing machine. So next, we want to stitch just an eighth of an inch outside of that pocket placement line along the top, exactly on the edge along the bottom, exactly on the short edge here, and come back. I like to start in the middle so that I'm not leaving, uh, trying to back stitch or secure the stitching in a corner. We're already going to be clipping into those corners in a step or two, and I don't want that to be uh, weakened at all. So stitch along eighth of an inch or so above and, and below that line. This is the stitching that sets up the width of your pocket piping or those lips. Uh, so be very careful with this. And you have stitched through all the layers. Next, once you've stitched through all those layers, it's time to cut down the center and then, stopping about a half inch short from the, sh uh, the corners, clip very carefully into the corner, clip up to, but not through, that corner stitching. This will help us, this very careful clipping will help us turn the piping, the welts, and make them very even. So we want to be very careful with this step. Once you've clipped that, it's time to reach through and pull those piping pieces to the inside and take that to the ironing board and get ready to iron those seams open. And you can already see, although it's lumpy because I haven't ironed it, that it's starting to look like a back pocket. So here is my back pocket after I've ironed it and it's vital that you remember to press the seams open. So this seam right here, we want to press that open. Otherwise, your welts will um, be lumpy and rounded, and that's not at all what the effect that we're after. So make sure to use your ironing tools and the tip of your iron and get in there and press that seam open. On the bottom, and then again on the top, press that open. Uh, pull these prongs that you, uh, the triangles that you clipped in a previous, in that previous step, make sure those are nicely pulled to the outside. You want those to be pointing this way on each end and zooming in, you can see that there are full, there's a little pleated action going on here because the very act of coming up and folding over creates a little box pleat here. You want to make sure that that's nice and flat. It's also in this pressing that you can roll each welt. Um, if you zoom in really good, you can see that the top welt here is just a hair, maybe a 32nd of an inch narrower than the bottom one. This is the pressing that you'll want to just uh, uh, ju adjust those so that they are indeed symmetrical. Top. Once you have those welts symmetrical, top and bottom, pin them and then with a single thread hand sewing, just stitch in the ditch to hold those welts perfectly in place while you finish the pocket. Once you have those welts hand basted in place so that they don't 
uh, change their width as you finish the pocket. Next, just here on the bottom, lift this up and uh, zigzag or stitch this flat, the surged edge. We want that nailed down to the um, pocketing piece so that when the client puts his hand in to get his wallet and pulls it out, he doesn't lift that up. We want that stitched just to the pocketing, not through to the outside of the trouser. We don't want that. We just want it stitched through to the pocketing to hold that down. We don't have to do that up here because there's going to be a, another stitch line that will hold that in place. So now, once you have this stitched down, it's time to finish the pocket by placing the second layer of the bag on it, pinning that well all the way around, and you want to stitch by lifting the trouser leg out of the way because you want to stitch as it, uh, view this pin as if it was a line of machine stitching. You want to stitch and catch that triangle prong and catch in place this pleat. We want to just nail that down. So you want to stitch from the top down around the bottom of your pocket, up the other side, again, pinning well and catching that prong and that pleat, nailing that down right there, all the way up to the top. Then, finally, just through this top welt only, machine stitch in the ditch, just across the top, to hold the trousers to the pocketing with the facing on it. That way, when the, when the client reaches in, he can only go one direction. If you forget to do that, and you finish this off with the facing up here at the top of the trousers, then he could accidentally, or this could go like this, and that's not the effect we're looking for. So we want to stitch in the ditch across the top of the pocket, which helps support all of that together.